Our Pasha concentrates on the story of Avraham and how he came to the land of Canaan. In Pirkei Avot, we are told that there were 10 generations from Adam until Noah before the world was destroyed. And there were 10 generations from Noah until Avraham. In both instances, there was a new beginning. So it turns out that there are three beginnings of the world. Bereshit, the actual creation of the world. Then the, the new beginning of the world was Noah and his family. And the new beginning, the new spiritual beginning of the world in the times of Avraham. There was more than one beginning. Rabbi Elimelech Biedemann points out that if we look at the word Bereshit, Bereshit means in the beginning. You can actually divide it into two words. Bet, Reshit. Reshit means a beginning. Bet means two. Two beginnings. There always have to be two beginnings. You know, when you start something new, it's exciting. It's fresh. You feel a certain passion. But that passion doesn't last or f- for a long time. And therefore, you have to renew yourselves. And Rabbi Biederman gives an example of the beginning of the new yeshivas man, the beginning of the new semester of yeshivas after the Holy Days and after Sukkot, and it begins the beginning of the month of Cheshvan. And on Rosh Chodesh Cheshvan, all of the yeshiva, Bochrim, all of the students of the yeshiva come together, and there's an excitement. Everybody's back in the Beit Midrash in the learning hall, and people perhaps have got a new chavrut, a new study partner, and they begin to learn some new material. But already on the second day of Cheshvan, they're feeling, you know, this is really difficult. Am I going to be able to keep this up for the, for the long term that's still to come throughout the winter in the Northern Hemisphere? So there has to be two beginnings. The beginning on Rosh Chodesh Cheshvan, the first of Cheshvan, but also on the second of Cheshvan. You have to begin again afresh. We know that there's a, a halakha in the laws of Shabbat that you have to set up the Shabbat candles, but you should actually light them and extinguish them and then light them later. This is actually the duty of the husband. The husband of the home has to set up the Shabbos candles and ideally he should light the wicks and then extinguish it. And there's a saying in Torah circles that it's one thing to light a candle, but it's a completely different thing to light an extinguished candle. Because the extinguished candle represents the fact that, you know, you've done it and you've seen it and the passion is gone. Can you reignite the passion? This is an important message for all of life. And it's something that we learn from Avraham. Avraham began life. He lived life until the age of 75. And then he had a whole new beginning. He started all over afresh. He left his land and he went to a new land. And, and, and he started a new movement and a new belief in Hashem. So when you're feeling down and when you're feeling that you're out of passion, remember, you've had your first beginning. Now is time to start again. I wish you a Shabbat Shalom.